<laughs> All right, everybody. Happy New Year's here on the Doe and 5 show. We're going to go ahead and release the show a little early again this week so you guys can enjoy your uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day without well, looking at these two <laughs> ugly faces. Give you time to recover. I uh, appreciate everybody <laughs> tuning in last week uh, for the Christmas show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get things rolling this week, Joe. Did you have a good Christmas before we get started? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. So I don't know how your house fits 11 million children. Yeah, I don't know either. I usually just hide in the garage. or. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and start with a Christmas story <clears throat> to wrap things up. Uh, grandmother seen charging her family members 45 bucks each go for Christmas dinner this year. <laughs> uh, Was it good? I, well, I don't know. It looks in, interesting. No. It looks interesting. No, I'm not paying $45 yeah. for that. There's too many vegetables. Uh, Haley Garbutt of New Yorkshire decided to ask for payment after finding herself catering for more and more people each year. But rather than asking them to cover the cost of their own meal, the 52-year-old will make a tidy profit this year. That's because she has taken in approximately 540 bucks from 12 family members and has only spent 390 on the shopping. She says it's allowed her to cater for everyone's specific needs and make this year's dinner a little bit more special. Using the surplus of cash to go all out, Haley, an end of life uh, in their career, said that I get all my family to put in before I go and do the sh Christmas shopping. This year I spent uh, about 400 bucks online at Morrison's doing the, or I'm sorry, 390 bucks at Morrison's doing the big shop and making sure I had a variety of things in it. Uh, the article goes on a little bit more, but she's got 12 family members and basically she, she clean, kind of cleaned house on making dinner for everybody. <laughs> she screwed them. That, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that is a lot of money. And I, I don't see anything I don't in there that, that is either. I don't we'll see anything in there. there I, yeah, you guys figure out what it is and let us know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't pay for any of that crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, oh, there you go. There's some quiche in there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I just sent you it. You saw that text, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, so Granny, uh, she's making a profit. She's like, screw you guys. I'm tired of cooking for free and doing the dishes. You're going to pay a pretty handsome fee for... <laughs> How, your how about dinner? just asking for some help afterward? Yeah. That seems kind of merry effing Christmas to you. <laughs> Grandma got ran over by uh, her son. Yeah, <laughs> minivan by family members <laughs> <laughs> for charging too much on us Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh, Colorado Springs man robs bank, throws cash, and yells "Merry Christmas" in the process. <laughs> 65-year-old Colorado man is jailed after witnesses say he robbed a bank in Colorado Springs, walked outside and threw money out of the bag, and then yelled, Merry Christmas! <laughs> he then proceeded to walk to the coffee shop next door, sat down, and waited for the cops. <laughs> the sound of the police. Dion, uh, Dion Pascali told KKTV that bystanders picked up the money and gave it back to the bank. Uh, police say Stupid! <laughs> Police say thousands of dollars are still missing. The man is currently in jail. <laughs> Those on... were the people that weren't so <laughs> <Yeah>. stupid. <laughs> the man is now jailed on ten thousand dollar bail and a court date. Court date set for next week. <laughs> Merry freaking Christmas! It's time for some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> that kind of sounds like that would be your plan if you robbed a bank. Just go next door. <laughs> I, don't, some coffee. I don't really have the money. I don't have to have the money, so I think I'll just give it to everyone else and have some coffee. Uh, out of Pritchard, Alabama, some spelling mistakes are tough to see, but that doesn't include the one that was made on 10,000 trash bins in an Alabama, in an Alabama city. The city of Pritchard's new residential garbage cans say that the town is located in Mobile Country, but where they were supposed to say they were mo located in Mobile County, without the extra R in it. Uh, there's the uh, top of the trash can there, They the circle of where it says country, country instead of county. Yeah. Uh, Pritchard Mayor Jimmy Gardner told the local news that the city's public works department had the duty of making sure the writing on the trash cans was spelled correctly. Things like that do happen in proofreading, he said. The city, however, does not plan to replace the bins, and that's fine with most people. It doesn't really matter as long as they pick up the rubbish. Yeah, it, it holds your crap. Must it have been doesn't. a slow day uh, in Mobile County, or, mobile or at least County. in Alabama, for mobile that to be much country. of a news story. But. <laughs> Sorry, that's Mobile Country. Pretty, shoot, uh, pretty short news week. That's all we got for this week in news. Stay oh. tuned for this week in Florida. Yay. A guy in Florida wanted to prove that everyone there is a bad scene. So for Christmas to show all his kindness, he gave as gifts some dime bags of weed. What the hell is with Florida, where all crazy shit seems to come from? A week won't pass by without lots of stories proving that Florida's dumb. 
All right, everybody, welcome to This Week in Florida. We're going to start out of our one of our favorite counties, Joe, Pasco. Pasco. Pasco County. Florida man playing cowboy shoots himself in the leg. <laughs> Florida man who accidentally shot himself in the leg while playing cowboy lied about the incident because he's not supposed to own a gun, according to the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> not only that, the incredible embarrassment is of being that... Okay, go uh, ahead. Deputies say 36-year-old Matthew Knopfsinger Jr. was taken to a hospital on Wait, this what's his last name? Knopfsinger. Yeah. Junior. Junior. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> now, he was taken to a local hospital on December 14th to be treated for a gunshot wound and initially said he was in the woods when someone just shot him. After At point blank yeah. range. <laughs> <laughs> Must have not used a Pop-Tart. <laughs> After deputies questioned him further about why he had an entrance and exit wound straight down his leg, Knopfsinger admitted that he was playing cowboy with a 22 revolver when he accidentally shot himself. I, I don't know. I've never seen a cowboy movie where you <laughs> shot yourself in a leg. Uh, he said he lied because he's a convicted felon and he's not supposed to be in possession of a firearm. On the way to jail, he spontaneously uttered that he only shot the gun three times, according to the arrest report. <laughs> <laughs> he had two bullet wounds. <laughs> he missed himself twice, at least. Uh, wallet containing four credit cards in the 90 that shockingly did not belong to Knopfsinger were found in his backpack. Uh, <laughs> that is shocking. Said he just happened to find the items. Uh, Knopfsinger, age 36, was arrested on charges of possession of a personal Wait, information. I want to know where those two other bullets went. <laughs> And he has IDs for other people. That's kind and of strange, isn't of a isn't firearm. It? Yeah, he's having kind of a bad day. <laughs> well, so is somebody else, I think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, out of Flagler County, Florida, a Florida man wearing a plastic bag as a t-shirt <laughs> is accused of running from deputies. <laughs> uh, we'll put some uh, footage up there for you guys here in a minute. A uh, Florida man placed a bag over his head and wore it as if it were a t-shirt while a deputy was chasing him. Deputies said they originally attempted to arrest 25-year-old Anthony Mobley around 2.30 a.m. last Wednesday when they received, a alert, uh, received an alert on a vehicle that was reported stolen. Authorities said they arrived at the Shell gas station and saw Mobley getting fuel, but when they attempted to do uh, a traffic stop on the highway, he ran off. Stop sticks were successfully used, and when the vehicle was no longer operable, Mobley ran into the wood line. Records show a perimeter was set up, but deputies were unable to find Mobley. Uh, when they did, however, they did, however, he had a bag yeah, over him. They did, however, find the clothing that he left behind. Uh, deputies say they Wait, he left his clothes behind. <laughs> deputies said they issued a be on the lookout for Mobley and posted his picture to their social media accounts. Mobley was again spotted on State Road 11 around 11 a.m. the following day, and another perimeter was set up. But deputies were unable to find him in a, in a heavily wooded area. Around 1 p.m. on Thursday, deputies said they received a report of a man wearing only his boxers walking around uh, walking along State Road 11. Deputy said Mobley. He just was, stayed on the same highway. I Wouldn't guess. you venture out? Well, maybe he was cold. He only had his boxers. <laughs> yeah, but it's just as cold on a different highway. <laughs> well, deputy said Mobley was carrying a white bag over his shoulder, but when he saw the uh, authorities, he ran deeper into the woods and then placed the bag over his head to wear it if, if it was to wear it as if it were a T-shirt. Body cam video shows Mobley was lying in standing water when deputies finally caught up to him. Uh, he was advised, "If you move, you're going to get tased. Do you understand?" Mobley complained of being dehydrated. Uh, being out there by himself for a few days. Can I drink this water, bro? He asked the police. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, the deputy deputy was kind enough to offer him some water that he had in his vehicle, and the subject is now in custody. <laughs> I don't understand the stripping part. Well, you know, people do strange things. They like being naked in Florida. Have you not learned this yet? <laughs> they, they do. <laughs> Nudity is a big thing down there. Um, Florida man shoots co at a co-worker's mother over a sandwich order. Florida man was arrested on Sunday over reports that he allegedly shot at his co-worker's mom last month because of, his, because of a sandwich order. Destin Garcia II, age 18, was charged with aggravated res, uh, assault with a deadly weapon uh, at it for a shooting at a, here near home, at a nearby home in Green Acres. It is the place dun, to be. Dun, dun. Uh, according to the report, on November 29th, Garcia and a co-worker were working on a subway, uh-oh, another subway, inside of Palm Springs Walmart when a promotion for a free sandwich was being offered to store employees. Garcia allegedly told police he became upset with his co-worker when she made a rap for a Walmart manager, then ignored him when he told her she needed to pay the difference since the promotion was for subs only. The following day at around 9 a.m., Garcia allegedly went to his co-worker's home, shoved her mother, and refused to leave when asked by the homeowner. That's when he took out a handgun and fired it at the woman's feet, missing her, police said. Uh, Garcia took off but was arrested two weeks later by the Palm County uh, Sheriff's Office. You know... Okay, so the guy shot that weapon three times. He hit himself once. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had pop turret assaults, and they can't seem to hit the mark. He just shot at the lady's feet from basically... Point blank range. Yeah. 
Missed. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe people need more some optometry appointments or I guess some really is depth it, perception problems. Is it problems. their vision? Is it their state of mind? Is it the drugs? Is it Was he naked? Don't say. I Don't bet say. he was. <laughs> I bet he was naked. Yeah, just more. We had drama last week over Subway. Uh, uh, one of the, the, they didn't have a celebration about the new job at Subway, remember? And oh, that's right. Yeah. the place and tried to burn the yeah, place down. But she didn't remember any of it. <laughs> yeah. She had um, it's true. She had two glasses of water and a couple mixed drinks or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Some seltzer water. Seltzer yeah, water. yeah, but she had her clothes <laughs> on. I saw her picture. I'm glad. Is your yard sinking by your seawall? Yes, I sure yes, hope it, is. it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, out of St. Petersburg, Florida, here's the uh, musical masterpiece for the week. Florida man passes out marijuana because it was Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Here's a dime bag for you. Police arrested a man who admitted to handing out marijuana because it was Christmas. Uh, Richard Ellis Spurrier, age 67, was in the sharing spirit on Saturday. He had 45 grams of marijuana on him that he was giving to people passing by uh, 16 Second Street in North St. Pete. During an interview with police, he said he was sharing the drugs because of the Christmas holiday. What's more, police would then find a hidden sword inside of Spurrier's cane when they arrested him at around 11 p.m. He faces charges of possession of marijuana with the intent to sell. So, well, but he wasn't trying to sell. He was giving it away. What's the street value on 45 grams of pot? Probably nothing in Florida. They like cocaine. <laughs> Don't give me that shit. <laughs> it's this weekend. It's stuff free. Here. <laughs> And I have my clothes on. Oh, that's, yeah, well. that's too bad. All right. Well, that's all we got for this week in Florida. That was kind of him to do that. It was. He's it didn't look like spirit. he had a lot of money. So for him to give that stuff away was very giving. Yeah. You have to appreciate the sentiment in that. Probably a Bernie fan. You can just give enough away for free. Had to go there, didn't you? I left my sign in the car. Speaking of Bernie, it's time for this week in politics. Here we go. Oh, boy. All right, everybody, welcome to This Week in Political Garbage. Uh, we're going to talk about Nike once again this week, Joe. Oh, which means we're also going to talk about your favorite person, aren't I, you? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, transgender worker suing Nike for $1.1 million cites pronoun abuses. Uh, <sighs> transgender former Nike contractor is seeking $1.1 million in damages from the sporting goods giant for allegedly allowing gender identity-based harassment. According to a civil lawsuit filed this week, Nike and Maine's Brady Group, a staffing firm that hired workers for Nike, discriminated against computer engineer Jazz Lyles, who identifies who identifies as a transmasculine and prefers Wait, what the f I, I don't know. Okay. And prefers the pronouns they, them, and their. That's T H E I R. Uh, the complaint was filed with uh, the Multnomah Circuit Court in Oregon. Isn't that plural? <laughs> Listen. Okay. Uh, during Lyles', Lyles tenure at Nike, from May of 2017 to September of 2018, the engineer was repeatedly misgendered by co-workers, the complaint said. While Lyles notified the management about the issue multiple times, the companies allegedly failed to implement any policies, procedures, and trainings around the use of gender pronouns in the workplace. When someone refuses to acknowledge a person's gender identity or insists on referring to them by a gender to which they do not identify, which is referred to as misgendering, this causes real and significant harm, read the complaint. This is particularly true when a person is misgendered repeatedly on a daily basis. Nike declined to comment on the lawsuit, but said the company is committed to a cultural, uh, of culture of diversity, inclusion, and respect where everyone can succeed and realize their full potential. Maines Brady did not respond to requests for comment. Nike allegedly fostered a boys club jock mentality work culture that was hostile to, hostile to people who do not fit uh, typical gender stereotypes. Uh, also known as men and women, uh, which the complaint said that... Not just <laughs> men and women, Lee, and they. And they yeah, and there. That's T-H-E-I-R. Uh, which the complaint said is contrary to the progressive reputation the sporting a good company uh, enjoys with the public. In its Be True campaign, Joe, Nike hired transgender athletes to promote athletic wear like hoodies and sneakers. The suit alleges that placing the burden on Lyles to educate colleagues about gender identity caused tension between the engineer and her co-workers. Who allegedly called Lyle's her? Stu yeah, uh, it there. Yeah, uh, they. Well, hey, I'm just reading the article. I'm just reading the article. <laughs> uh, coworkers allegedly They're called Lyle's sensitive, stupid, and unstable. One colleague allegedly said, "I know I'm not supposed to call you she male." Uh, another <laughs> another coworker allegedly chose not to interact with the plaintiff at all. Still, well, another because they didn't know what to say. <laughs> 
Still another colleague allegedly said she would not use Lyles' uh, gender pronouns for religious reasons. Uh, despite Which her, they have uh, that right, right? Uh, no, they don't have that right. Depends which side of the fence you sit on. Uh, despite, despite reporting these in separate incidents to Nike, as well as Maines Brady, uh, neither took any action or conducted an investigation into the matter. Instead, the reports to the companies allegedly resulted in retaliation against Lyles, who was told that they could, uh, she could, uh, or they, it, that, they, that. they could ask for reassign, uh, reassignment at the expense of their career, or see their work further impeded by co-workers. That compl- this hurts my <laughs> head to listen to it. <laughs> so here's the deal. You, it, they, their, whatever the hell you're calling yourself, you're stupid. Yeah. You are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't even know from that article if it's a boy or if it's a girl. I don't, I don't either. Why can't we call it it? Because it is it. Well, we talked about this earlier today. If you're going to identify as anything but what God has given you, I've decided that you are now going to be a Sasquatch. I think that's a so good thing. So from this day forward on the show, when we talk about nonsense like this, I will be referring to you as Sasquatch. <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I don't... Okay, so first of all, it worked there. Because I'm not calling it they. <laughs> Sasquatch they... worked for one of the most successful corporations on the planet, Joe. On the planet. Wait, I hate that company. I don't like them either. But they're one of the most successful corporations <laughs> yes. on the planet. Yeah. For but... four months. <laughs> Sasquatch worked there for four months. <sighs> How can we call it Bigfoot, or does it have to be Sasquatch? Call, call it whatever you want. I'm sticking with Sas- Sas- Sasquatch. <laughs> so, for four months, and thought that there should be a company-wide training for it. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Yeah. What? If that... If that... Sasquatch gets a penny... So, uh, yeah, so one person that's obviously got some mental issues doesn't know whether they have she a wants this or not. entire corporation to receive, uh, I guess, some type of sensitivity training to what she is identifying as. Uh, last year's numbers one, for last year's one point two million dollars, but yet police get shunned at yeah, that's Starbucks. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Nike Joe, they employ, uh, as of last records may, may note in the public, over 76,000, almost 77,000 employees worldwide in Nike. And she wants every last one of those people to have training to refer to her as Sasquatch. Sasquatch. <laughs> Sasquatch. <so. laughs> I don't need any training for that. I'll call you that for free every second of every day. I can't believe that. I can't believe that that has gone anywhere. I can't believe <laughs> lawyers would say, yeah, yeah you got a case there. Yeah, but, but you see that crap all the time. The, the the lawsuits that people are getting away with or filing in, in courts are mind boggling. Where's Bigfoot from? Where was that I story? Don't, you couldn't. I don't even. Okay, know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a take a guess. <laughs> Is there a picture of it? No. Well, she's probably so uh, butthurt about the whole thing. Uh, Sasquatch probably doesn't want their their picture out there for the world to see. <laughs> Well, no one's actually gotten a good picture of Sasquatch. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> it's wearing Nike shoes. Mikey, Nike has captured the <laughs> illustrious Sasquatch. <laughs> oh, I, I can't get over how effing ridiculous everything's getting. Yeah. You know, once again, it's all of our, our laws and stuff are to help. The majority of the people, and people are always going to be left out, but you can't, you know, you can have amendments, I guess, to everything, but that is ridiculous. Be, and what it it didn't really identify as a male, or it, it didn't know, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I need to Google what that word means. What was it? I like she male. <laughs> Transmasculine. <laughs> Transmasculine. What? Hey Google, we need to that Google thing out here. Hey Google, <laughs> what, what the hell? Trans... <laughs> it's going. Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> mean. Transmasculine is a term to describe transgender people who were assigned female at birth but identify with masculinity to a greater extent than with femininity. 
Is mul- there a percentage? <laughs> uh, multi-gender people whose strongest gender identity is a masculine one. Gender fluid people who are masculine. Uh, most uh, I don't even know. What the Stop hell it! No. <laughs> it means you're a Sasquatch. That's what it means. Food That's all we got for this week. Of political garbage. Happy New Year, everybody. Forgot <laughs> and never brought to mind. Should all the acquaintance be forgot and days of all land sign?